Hi, I'm Professor Phoebe Wolfskill. I'm in the Department of American Studies and African American and African Diaspora Studies, and I also teach art history classes. And I am going to show you my bo bottleneck that I use for my class, the visual arts of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, my large bottleneck in any of my classes, because I teach visual images, is to get the students to try to learn to think critically about images and to be able to talk about something that's visual in a critical way, that images don't just appear, that they're constructed, that a painting, a sculpture, a photograph, all of that is constructed, and that students can look at images and find a way to interpret them, not just describe them, but interpret them. So my, bottleneck, my large bottleneck is examining images critically and arguing how images create meaning. Um, so this is my larger bottleneck. I divide analyzing an image into three parts, one being formal analysis, which is attention to the style of a work, what it looks like. Uh, two is content, what is the image about? And three is context, how does the image relate to the time period in which it was constructed. So that's the larger amount of information that students need to think about. But for my particular bottleneck, and what I would say is the most challenging component for students, is the formal analysis. Um, taking an image and learning how to critique it. So the way I set this up, the way I decided to um, test this and assess it, is first to use an image and have students uh, write down their responses to questions that I pose. Uh, I then had them turn to one another in groups of two or three students and discuss together. What did you write? What did you say? What did you look at? I then had them respond to the image itself using one word. What's one word you would use to describe this image? Later on in the semester, I then had an exam question that allowed them to do this work because I wanted to see that they grasp this concept. Okay, so what I have the students do is I take an image like this one by, by Archibald Motley Jr. He's associated with the Harlem Renaissance. Um, he's specifically in, in um, Chicago, so what would be called the New Negro Renaissance at the time. And what Renaissance artists were doing was to create more complicated images of African Americans. There had been so many negative stereotypes, so many derogatory images of African Americans, and Motley was one of many painters and other artists that wanted to create a more complex image. This particular painting is a wonderful challenge because it is an interesting reflection on black urban life. It's not necessarily a positive image, and I say that in part because of some of the figuration that he uses. So it's a nice image to use in a class on the Harlem Renaissance where, wait, we're, we're, we're thinking about how we reinterpret race, we're looking at positive images of African Americans by African American artists, but this is not unequivoc unequivocally positive. Um, here are the steps of formal analysis, and these are the questions that I have students think about. They're looking at the image, they're thinking about how is it organized? What's in the center? What's in the periphery? Why did Archibald Motley set up this painting in this way? Two, medium. It's a painting. It's oil on canvas. What does that mean? How does he blend color? What colors does he use? Why do you think he does that? Um, step three, detail. What colors and textures do you see? What use of light and shading? What appears real? What appears distorted? What appears abstract? Why do you think he does this? And here's, this is the analysis component. How do you interpret this work based on what you've looked at? What do you think is Motley's point in constructing this painting in this manner? Why is he doing this? Why did he construct it in this way? And then the fifth step is the one word analysis. What one word would you use to describe this painting? So after I have them think about these questions, discuss these questions in their group, we discuss it as a class, and then I have them reflect on this activity. What did you gain from this? What questions do you still have? That generates more conversation where we can dig even deeper into this painting. Uh, my pre-test written observations on this activity, I felt like the class averaged about a 78 to an 82%. So that was based on me taking in their written responses and the kinds of comments they made. I wasn't actually grading them, um, but I was thinking about, okay, where are they in terms of really analyzing critically this painting? 
uh, the post-test exam answers averaged much higher, 88 to 96 percent. So in that way, I felt like the activity was really successful because they knew how to dig into a work of art in a more complicated fashion. They knew what to look for. Um, and then I got a, a lot of wonderful one-word responses to this composition that also allowed for more conversation on what Motley's trying to do. Um, what we learned, I think the students enjoyed this assignment. I had students that normally say nothing and sit in the back of the classroom, walk to the front of the classroom and sit down and, t and look very closely at the painting. Everyone was engaged. They were all talking within their groups. Um, they were animated, some were even angry at some of Motley's choices in constructing this painting. Um, and I also found that the activity took a long time and I was okay with that. I'm not always concerned with covering all of the material. If we can have a really deep and meaningful conversation that teaches them the larger scope of the class, sort of the larger learning objective, then I'm fine if it takes more time than I anticipated. Uh, what went well? I would say everything went well. And then what would you change? This is what I gained upon reflection, class re reflection. I had a student point out that she'd rather start with the whole painting and say, wait, what is this about? What's the narrative? Start with the big picture and then dig into the various details. And I think she's right because that is typically how we look at a composition. What's the story about? What's going on here? And then let's break it into parts. So I think I will do that next time I do this assignment. Uh, and several students also mentioned they wanted more practice with this, which I can certainly provide as well, because uh, I do feel like this was an important assignment that helped them to better understand and to better look at the other images that we discussed throughout the class.